Hi, today I want us to talk about what I term concept brands as against category or industry brands. Now, there was, um, if you look at Theodore Levitt, there was an article written called Marketing Myopia probably 70 years ago today in that vicinity. Um, and what Marketing Myopia meant, he basically spoke about the American railroad system and how over time other forms of transport really replaced the American railroad system. So how do you ensure that if you're in business, you remain relevant to new generations and changes in competitive landscape? How do you retain the relevancy? Now, if you look at brand management, um, many brands can never transcend their category definitions. In other words, if we talk about a brand like Toyota or a brand like Volvo, maybe those brands can only ever be car brands. Maybe a brand like HSBC as a bank, or Barclays, or FNB, or any other brand, maybe those brands can only ever be banks. In other words, how do you transcend the category definition and, what, and create what I would term a concept brand? A concept brand for me is where the value system of the brand transcends any given product category. And that is an incredibly powerful thing to do. If you take Apple as an example, because we so often speak about Apple today, Apple has innovated in many industries. It has created its own industry, industries, from iTunes as a library system for music and a retail system for music, through to iPad, which is an entirely new um, area of, 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 of engagement in terms of tablets, through to computers, through to the iPod, through to the telephone. In every one of those instances, the Apple brand had a value system that was able to transcend many product categories that historically we would have had. Now to do that, Apple changed its name. It changed its name from Apple Computer to Apple Incorporated because it, ma it made it quite clear that the brand was symbolically changing the way in which it looks at um, business and design. And it started with a lot of integrity because one of the comments that Steve Jobs made is that a brand is not, um, it's not just about the design of the look and feel, it is also how the brand works. In other words, how the brand performs and how you interface with it. Now, if you look at Apple, those elements are fundamentally the same across the board. When you see an Apple, you know it's Apple from the operating system, the way it interfaces, the way the engagement work, from the software, the applications, every single component of that brand delivers an integrated promise. That is what I term a concept brand. Um, and a concept brand like Virgin, Virgin is another concept brand, where everything that Virgin does is based on the principle of delivering superior value. Whether it's superior value in Virgin Atlantic as an airline, whether it's superior value when I go to the gym like in Virgin Active, whether it's superior value in Virgin Mobile, whether it's superior value in Virgin Money, but in every one of those elements there is an underlying principle is with Virgin you get more. With Virgin we deliver more value. So a concept brand for me is a very, very powerful thing and it, way, it goes way beyond the traditional definition of line extensions in brands. If you take a brand like Dove, I think with, with establishing Dove as looking at beauty in a certain way, some of the elements like the moisturizing effect that's always part of, of, of Dove will always be there. However, the way it looks at beauty has opened a platform for the brand that is way ahead of it being started off as a toilet soap in a one quite small part of the market. So the way in which the brand conceptually transcended its history and became a far bigger brand with a far bigger space, now competing with even iconic beauty brands like Clarence and those kinds of brands, because effectively it has straddled those kinds of categories. If you take a brand like Swarovski, one of the, I think, most amazing brands in how it's changed, coming from Austria, and I don't think many of us would say Austrian brands are highly innovative generally, except for Red Bull, of course. 
But if you look at Swarovski, the reality of Swarovski is that here was a company that made trinkets. They were the kind of things that you would buy at the airport to bring home to your wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, or kid, or best friend. But it was never a serious brand that people would have really noted in any significant way. Look at Swarovski today. It's into lighting, it's into fashion, it's into camera lenses. So it took its, it's into furniture, it's into cell phones. There is almost nothing that they do not dabble in as a brand if you look at Swarovski. It's become a lifestyle brand, it's become a fashion brand. And it's all based on the principle that Swarovski is able to make superior crystals. In other words, what is the core capability of that brand? To make better crystals than anybody else. And he took that principle and he transcended it into everything they do. And for me, that is the value of having a concept brand. Thinking outside of the category definition. Thinking outside of one or two elements. It is easier probably for... Um, for Nokia to become something more than a cell phone brand than it would be for Toyota to become anything more than a car brand. So think about your brand when you establish your brand, when you evaluate your brand, when you look at the value system, when you look at the purpose of your brand and think about how many categories it effectively can transcend because that becomes a base for value like I think Apple has demonstrated to us.